That's right, it's that time of the year. The fall has just begun. Black Friday is just a couple of weeks away, and I know a lot of you are wondering which phone should you get during the holiday season. A lot of us are asking ourselves the same question, so I'm Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now, and these are the top five smartphones that we recommend you purchase for this holiday season. Number five is the Nokia Lumia 1020. And the only reason why this phone is not really number one on this list is actually two reasons. Number one, it's kind of a bulky phone for most people. And number two, the fact that it runs Windows Phone, which is still there to mature. You still don't have a lot of the applications that a lot of people are looking for. But this is pretty much the camera phone to beat by most point and shoot cameras, not smartphones. This phone is on a class of its own. It takes amazing photography, the best that we've ever tested. And it's definitely a device that we would highly recommend if you're looking for a camera that's also a phone and if you're looking for a good Windows phone experience. Number four is the Moto X, and the only reason why this phone is not at the top of the list is because of its crappy camera. But aside from that, every single reviewer on the planet loves this phone, and they really can't explain why. They really can't explain if it's the fact that you can customize the phone, or the fact that you can just call it OK Google Now and it'll wake up, or the fact that the phone is actually not so big, but it's got a big display for a small chassis. There are a ton of great things about the Moto X, aside from the camera, that a lot of people are recommending, and it's really a phone that we would love for you to give a try. Number three is the LG G2, and the only reason why this phone is not at the top of the list is because of the LG UI, which is terrible, but you can install Nova Launcher on it and make it great. This is the Android camera to beat, pretty much the only smartphone running Android that has optical image stabilization on the camera, and aside from that great speed from that Snapdragon 800, aside from great, amazing battery life, a great display as well. We still can't figure out how LG was able to manage to fit that 5.2 inch display, which is like the Galaxy Note 1 on the size of a Galaxy S4. It's just amazing how they were able to fit this phone together. So again, we would love for you to give this phone a try as well. Number two is the LG made Google Nexus 5. And the only reason why this phone is not at the top of the list is because its battery life could be better and because its camera could also be better, even though apparently a software update will fix these things. And still, this is the best Android experience you can buy. Android 4.4 KitKat out of the box so you can get freaking updates as soon as they're out. And aside from that, this is actually a great phone. It's pretty much an LG G2, only on a smaller, thinner chassis for $350 unlocked. I don't think there's even a better phone option for those of you that are just interested on a great smartphone. I mean, for that price tag, it really makes buying any other phone pointless if it were just perfect for those little quirks that we just talked about. And finally, the top number one smartphone for the fall of 2013 is a tie between the Galaxy Note 3 and the iPhone 5S, which are just opposing phones in every single way, but phones that you should definitely consider. Pretty much the Galaxy Note 3 is one of the best multitasking experiences we've ever had. It's the best phablet you can buy. It's got great multitasking experiences. If you get the Snapdragon 800 phone, you should get great performance. It's got a great camera. And it's really just the non-compromised phone all in all. If you don't mind putting up with its size. And then on the other hand, we have the iPhone 5S, which is pretty much an iPhone 5, but then the Touch ID enhancements are great. It's got a great low light camera, even though you don't have optical image stabilization on it. And it performs great with that 64 bit chip, even though some people are still claiming it to be a gimmick. Both these phones are great, but again, one of them is the biggest one and the other one is the smallest one. And yet these are the two most popular phones at the end of the year that you could consider that you can buy. So either one of these phones will serve you well, but still, out of all these phones that we've just mentioned, that leads us to the question of this top five. Which would be your top phone for the fall of 2013? Would it be either of the phones that we just mentioned, or do you think that we're leaving a phone out? Leave us a comment down below. That's it for our top five. Thank you very much for watching. Remember the phones that were mentioned on this video are specifically the devices that were launched after spring because we have another video for the spring lineup. So anyways, make sure you follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you on the next top five.